Record store day. Let's get into it, baby. Banaguru, ah, ah, Banaguru. Vinyl Guru. Let's get into it. The madness and the crazy that has been ensuing with Record Store Day as of late. Have you noticed it or is it just me? I don't know. Let's give it a whiff though. All right, so we've got Record Store Day uh, slip ups here. And over the years, I've been noticing that they've been, you know, declining in fascination for me more and more. You'd be surprised. I know I still support. Uh, it's just been, I'm a creature of habit, damn it. Okay? I am. 10 years. Why not another year? You know? But I will say that minus the creature of habit aspect, 10 years ago it used to be so different than now. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a list and rundown of some of the things that I've noticed that have made a difference over time, to me at least, when it comes to some of the fun things about Record Store Day. Let's get into it, babes. Okay, so first up on the chart of wild mistakes that Record Store Day is doing lately. First Record Store Day mistake is the lame reissues, darling. And the reason why I say this is because they've been putting out a lot of reissues that are unnecessary reissues. Paul McCartney's 50th anniversary, we didn't need that. Um, Elton John's self-titled, we, we don't need this, we don't. I remember getting Elton John's self-titled, um, not too, I mean, sealed, not too long ago, for a measly $8.99. Yes! Um, you can get these great records, original copies, sealed, for really great prices if you just look my dear do not spend these overpriced prices um just because of hype so but that's that's besides the point i'm saying lame reissues because lame reissues i mean how often do you see this record you see it a lot you know give us something that we really need give us uh, you know Brian Eno's and David Burns' uh, really rad record from 2008. You know, give us um, some 90s Patti Smith or something, you know? Give us something we need. Frank Ocean, something, something, yes. So the next one up here for me is gonna be putting things out and then all of a sudden taking it back and not really saying it to anybody. Shh. Yes! I don't know why they're doing this, but I have noticed it. Do you guys remember there was supposed to be that um, Rolling Stones issue that was uh, supposed to be that Let It Bleed uh, anniversary edition, but it was supposed to be only 150 of them and they were hand pouring them? Now, that was supposed to go for like 100 bucks each? What happened to that? Yes! Pulled! Pulled. Another one, um, and these are all just from this year, okay? Another one that I was really looking for uh, this past month was uh, the Dirty Three, um, super deluxe version of their classic record, 4LP set. Now, that was nowhere to be found. We'll never know why, and a lot of fans were also looking for it. They went in the, in the store looking for this record and could not find it. Doesn't make sense, but, aha, to me it does, because at the same time, it brings people into the store. Whatever way they had to do it. Marketing 101, right? But that's just cheap to me. That's cheap, man. Don't reel people in. It's like bait and switch. That bait and switch method sucks. Do not do that to people, because you want to keep them there for life, you know? You want to keep them loving the experience of Record Store Day. And to do that, if somebody was there literally just for that one record and then they pulled it everywhere, um, leaves a bad taste in the mouth, don't you think? And how about the really obvious one? Come on, honey, overpriced. They've gotten so overpriced now, I... It's, what? They've gotten wild. Let's, let's just talk about something that I... 
I can show you right now over here. This is from a record store day last year only, okay? This is a record store day 2019. I got the B-52's uh, uh, Mesopotamia. And this was uh, produced by the lovely David Byrne and it was limited edition to 3,000 copies, right? Um, this went for a lovely $16.99. Now that's, that's livable. You know, that's livable, considering, you know, it's not a full LP, but you get, you get what you get, okay? Mesopotamia, probably one of the best B-52 songs. Love it. Um, now $16.99 for an EP. All right, all right. You've seen that B-52's not a bad price, right? It's all right. It's reasonable, okay? Um, Brandy Carlisle's new record, right? With Soundgarden, right? Two songs, two songs. You know, they covered two Soundgarden songs. How are they charging this much? Really, loves, really? For a 12 inch maxi? Come on, unbelievable. Yeah, um, what is this? What's going on, Record Store Day? Really, I mean, I'm a massive Soundgarden fan, so I, I had to get it, but Come on there, what are you doing? What are you doing, guys? And the fact is, that it's not only overpriced, I think it's also overpriced due to the fact that they're doing these limited runs. These limited runs are troublesome there because they've gotten a lot of fans stressed out and they're triggering the flipper culture. And the flipper culture has become really ridiculous now when it comes to Record Store Day, especially with certain releases. Even releases that you think you would be able to get, you know, you're not able to get. I have friends that are still looking for that Fleetwood Mac Alternative Rumors album. They're struggling to find it, you know. Um, I personally, for instance, was looking for uh, the Bill Evans record. And as you can see here, those prices, those prices are crazy. Okay, what's going on here? And that's the second pressing of that album. Unbelievable to me. But this is it, supply and demand. So if Record Store Day would just kindly press more, I mean, come on, limited of a thousand? Come on, dear. Press a bit more, you know you've got the fans out there ready to buy it. Um, the demand is there, dear. Don't act like it's not, so please. Give it to us, eliminate the middleman, the messenger, and we can really start to begin to enjoy this again. How about another one here? Releases that we all want, right? But then they're very cheaply produced, cheaply made. I know you guys know about this one. <laughs> uh, come on, man. You could have done such a good job. I'm putting this down and it's like bending. The plastic is getting flimsy and bending. Um, dodgy why why with the clear i want to be able to see the grooves man am i the only person that still likes black vinyl what's that all about uh it's controversial to like black vinyl now Ooh. <laughs> but really it's not about the record it's not about the colored record right now it's just about how it's housed i just really think this is really dodgy you know but Pro for this one at least it was numbered it was gold stamped uh hold on at least it was foiled. At least it was foil stamped. The reason why I say that is because this year there were, really wasn't a lot of even numbered records, which is unfortunate. You know, you pay a premium to get a record store day uh, run of something. Um, some of them don't even have the sticker. Some of them don't even have the, you know, proper, you know, that Record Store Day seal of approval that we all love? Come on, we're nerds, we love that stuff. Don't act like you don't like it, honey. We fetishize this, so might as well celebrate it, you know? Might as well at least have it on there so we can love it, you know? Come on, you know there are even people that love those nerdy number things. Ooh, what number did you get? I got this number. We all know those people, we are those people. So, Record Store Day, make it easy for us, baby. Give us what we want, it's not that hard.
Come on. Another reason why I don't like those very, very limited amounts is because it's kind of an unethical way to just get people in the door, you know, because everybody's so nervous um, to even get the record. Nowadays, it's been really scarce to get even the copy that you want. You go to some stores and maybe they'll only have one of each thing. So if you're not the first 10 people, it's... You could be sweating bullets, darling. This is this is Vietnam all over again, you know? To really get what you want, dear. So it's it's really... It's scarce. You know, the, the limited amount thing is really stressful to the fan as well, knowing that um, it, it's a really... Like I said, it's an unethical way to just get them in the door. And because of that number is so low, they squeeze the hell out of you in terms of price. So they get you in there nervous, they gouge your eyes out with the price and have you leaving out there going, well damn, they didn't even use any lube on me. I'm just saying, this is not the best execution that Record Store Day could have in order to make everybody happy, you know? Just saying, because I, I've talked to record stores and even they are frustrated having to tell some of their loyal customers that they don't even have some of the records that they got even though they made a huge order. I'm just saying, make those numbers higher. It'll make it easier for everybody. Everybody. Another thing is, why did they not number these? Because, uh, I don't know, maybe the conspiracy theory in me is going, huh. All right, they, they put out 16,000 of them. Maybe they really put less. Maybe they put out way more, but they're trying to make it like, you know, like they put out a lot, but they really didn't, you know what I mean? Wink, wink. We don't know. That's the thing. You gotta number these things or else it's a little bit funny. It's, you know, it's turning into a... Yes. And how about the constant regurgitation of the legacy acts, I'll put it. It's mostly acts that are, that just kicked the bed recently and they'll regurgitate their name and milk them for the next 50 issues, you know, or something along the, another. It's just, it's becoming one of those like niche markets, Record Store Day, for the most part. I'm talking about the big spectrum of it. I'm not talking about the overall thing because there will always be something good in Record Store Day. I'm not denying that. But what I'm saying is they're putting out a lot of, um, you know, 50th anniversary things or things that are, you know, live albums of people that have passed. I just think they, there's this room, this opportunity, this window of growth for new acts. Celebrate them. Put them out there. Those acts you can still kind of see live too, so why not make it a whole thing? Make it a whole event, you know? Um, have the artists come down into the stores and do this, you know, like, make it a fun thing. Make it a real um, indie thing, which is where Rocket Store Day initially started from, honestly. It's now turned into this corporate cannibal, as we see now, uh, working with corporate stores, and these corporate stores are actually getting a very high amount. Not only that, and they're selling them for really premium prices. I'm going to show you right here exactly what I'm talking about. I have the list wink wink from somebody I won't say, I won't divulge, you know, this is confidential here, but um, they gave me a list of everything that they were selling in their store, and this is a corporate store. Now, let's look at some of these prices, because these prices are just simply outrageous, okay? Look at those. Come on, man. Come on. I mean, 49 bucks for an LP? 40, you know, 40 bucks, 50 bucks for one LP, it's just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. When a couple of years ago, even on Record Store Day, you could get some affordable stuff. And it was only a few years ago. So, is there anything that you kind of see and then you maybe want to see tweak out and changed? Let's talk. Let us know. Let us know. We love reading these. We love knowing these. We love seeing these. Um, maybe Record Store Day people might see it too. So that's, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that maybe they might, uh, see this, rub a few chin hairs and might contemplate changing a few things in their assembly line system model distribution chaos. <laughs> Let's only hope. Anyway, dear, let us know and I'll give you a little bit of a ring-a-ling do to toodaloo Yes, indeed! That was a fun one. I 
educational. Educational and informational.